Welcome to the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast, where you'll learn the secret sauce, what it really takes to build a thriving mortgage business doing what you love without relying on cold calling or annoying realtors. And now, let's join your host, Doran Aldana. Thank you so much for watching. This is Doran Aldana, the mortgage marketing coach, coming at you with another awesome interview in our Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And this one is going to be a doozy of awesomeness because I'm gonna be interviewing the one, the only Brenda Valenda, otherwise known as Brenda Dentino. She is a absolute phenom in the mortgage industry. And we're gonna be sharing some really cool stuff about what she did to break all the records in her company as a Relate to the most amount of units closed in one calendar month. She closed 53 loans in one month, no joke. And so what we're gonna do is unpack how the hell she pulled that off. Most people don't even do that in a year. She pulled it off in one month. So if you are pregnant with curiosity as to how the heck she pulled that off, welcome to the club. I'm right there with you. So first off, Brenda, thanks for hanging with us today. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Looking forward to it. Fantastic. So uh, why don't we just kick things off with sharing a little bit about yourself, how long you've been in the business um, and just, you know, a little bit about uh, who you are personally real quick before we get in. Oh, my goodness. If I say how long I've been in the business, then I have to give away my age. Oh my. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, all right. I've been in the business about 38 years. And so, you know, um, I've done actually in originations was about 12 years in, oh wait, one, two, three, four, about 12 years was servicing and the rest was origination. So I just want to clarify that. Right. So it's been about 26 in origination. So not your okay. first rodeo. So all you know, newbies who are mind blown by 53 loans in a month, don't worry about it. It took some time to build up the acumen, the skill, the knowledge, the database, the momentum to, you know, create that kind of a formidable feat. But, uh, so you've been in the game a long time. And tell right. people uh, where you live and, uh, you know, just give give people a little bit of a sense of uh, who you are and, and why you, you know, decided to get in the business. Okay. Um, well, I live in um, Irvine, California, and I started in the business a long time ago. I was moving to Colorado and decided to get that servicing job, which I did for about 12 years, moved back to California and found out where the money really is, is in the origination side. Bingo. Because you help people, which is great. I mean, it's a reward. It's a win-win both ways. You make the money for it and get rewarded as well. So um, that was always my one of my draws. Of course, helping folks was a big, big second draw. Um, I wanted to make sure that everybody got in a home. I thought it was a cool thing. So any, um, working with Lone Link Financial um, back in the day. We, we don't have to really go too far, do we, on dates? But um, anyway, I was there for 16 years until they decided to close and then subsequently came to New American Funding and have been here for seven years. So, um, you know, that math should add up. There were a couple of goofy little things in between, but for the most part, that's the bulk of it. Um, started here and realized short order that um, it would be really super great besides the awesome operations department that we have. How do I get more originations? And that's when I started thinking, wow, a team is super great. And of course, when I hooked up with you uh, about five years ago, I thought, yeah, let's build a team. And that's where you came into the picture and helped me build my team or gave me ideas on how to make it cohesive. You know, co Is that the right word? Cohesive. Mm -hmm. cohesive. And make it Absolutely. work and run and give away some of my you know, things that I was afraid to let go of and mm -hmm. so on. And then with that team is how we, on that one month last year, got to 53 loans in one, it was the month of August. It wasn't even a 31 day or it was great. So Amazing. <laughs> actually if it was, we would have had a couple more because on the 1st right? of September, I did two more. Would have hit 55, baby. Yeah, and, uh, 55. 53 was already exceptional, but 55 would have been over the top. And uh, obviously that did not, happen just out of your own input and output it happened through the team so we'll unpack a little more about how you got that leverage and how you got all the pieces of the puzzle in place uh some things you wouldn't necessarily know about brenda off the top is she's a sucker for punishment she's been working with me for five years so you know she's a bona fide certified qualified sucker for punishment if she's been putting up with me for five years that's half a decade right. folks half a decade putting up with me um yes. so 
you know, you got to love her for that. And uh, in addition to that, when we first started working together, she was doing about 12, 13, 14 loans a month. She was a loan soldier. She decided to open her eyes and open her heart and open uh, her, um, you know, paradigm to new ways of doing things, leveraging systems, team, et cetera. Obviously that culminated into an epic month last month, 53 loans in one month, but her claim to fame really is the fact that she broke the record in her company nationwide. No one has yet to beat that record so far. And uh, she's been she's been in the top ten in her company pretty much since she uh, you know got into got into it about six years ago. She's been in President's Council uh, pretty much every year she's been in uh, New American fund, Funding you know for the last five and a half six years. So you know she's been a top dog, a leader in the industry, certainly an icon in her company. And uh, a lot of things have to go right to pull off the epic feat of fifty three loans in one month. And uh, what we want to do is unpack what exactly are the pieces of the puzzle that needed to get into place to be able to pull off that epic achievement. So why don't we start there, Brenda? Give us a quick laundry list of the key elements, the key pieces of the puzzle that needed to be put in place to be able to uh, you know, have such an avalanche of uh, volume closed in one month. Um, I would say, you know, I mean, one of the things that I promote big time, so do you, I mean, we're, we talk about it all the time, is database. You know, that's always helpful because, of course, when the rates improve and get better, then, you know, you want to capitalize on that, which is a big, you know, component of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, actually, once a week, as we've discussed many times, is I always have a database day, which mm -hmm. is very key because we stay focused on that database. And that's where you come in with some control. I mean, honestly, how when they're going to close, how they're going to close, whereas a purchase sometimes doesn't always give you that luxury. So that was always helpful when I was trying to get to those 53 because, you know, we had a good chunk of them as, in fact, I guess, I believe it was about 23 were refinances at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was able to steer them a little bit. But maintaining that database gets you geared up. That's number one key. Huge. Always keeping that database front and hand. Yeah, front and front and center. Um, so that was always there. Uh, and, and being consistent on the database calls starts building momentum, especially if you get a, a market where the rates are moving. You know, I was able to build a little bit of momentum. I remember um, in July thinking after, right after the 4th of July, you know what? It's still summer. We got some purchases coming in, but the rates are decent. I know there's people out there that need some help. And I'm going to figure out what it is and go after it, you know, identify, right? We identified mm -hmm. what we want to do. So that's exactly what we did. We ran some reports and got, you know, I got a little extra more than I normally would. What reports we're looking for is, you know, what rates they're at. Do they have mortgage insurance that we can remove? Mm -hmm. You know, how's the market trending at the time? You know, different things like that. So I started, you know, you always say whatever you did 30 days ago is what you're going to see that, you know, come to fruition now. So mm -hmm. I knew I had to start that first part of July to get anything rolling, but I just kept going on with it. And then, you know, added a little Saturday here and there and just being on the clients, just giving good customer service. I mean, honestly, and, and making sense and then using the team appropriately. That's well, there's we a golden it. thread. There's a golden thread that you can hear if you're really listening intently to Brenda is that she really cares about the client. She really cares about providing first class service. She really cares about getting them a positive outcome. And that's really the driving force. And you can't give someone a magic pill and have them really care. You know, you either care or you don't. And that's one of the awesome things about Brenda. And if you asked her clients, they would say the same thing. And one of the reasons why they send her referrals and keep coming back and doing additional transactions with her is because you can tell right from the get go, she's passionate about serving her clients, but she doesn't stop there. She's proactive. She doesn't drift. She drives. She doesn't wait for the phone to ring. She makes the phone ring. She is proactive. She carves out the time. She plans the work. She works the plan. She doesn't leave it to chance. So you want to take note. Um, uh, one of the things that I see time and time again, and it's egregious and it's painful and it's frankly, it's an unnecessary hell that a lot of people inflict themselves with. And that is they don't build a database. They've been in the game 10, 15, 20 years. They don't cultivate the database and they're in the hunt and kill mode and they're chasing the now money. So Brenda is a beautiful blossoming example of the epic power of sustained proactive effort in cultivating 
a database and having a heart to really care about the client long-term. So uh, a few things I wanted to point out there. Now, in terms of mindset, Brenda, I know you're a huge proponent of mindset. Uh, we've been working on mindset, you know, ever since we got started. Uh, you are an embodiment of someone who really has a purposeful intention daily of bringing a certain mindset into how you take on life that I think plays a big role in your success. Can you speak to that in terms of how you cultivate a winning mindset and how you do it purposefully and intentionally as opposed to leaving it to chance? Well, first of all, I, I learned a long time ago, you can't leave it to chance because I mean, I don't know anybody in the world that would wake up every single morning, day after day after day, just say, woohoo, I just can't wait till the day starts, but have no plan. I mean, that just doesn't, they don't mix, they don't mm -hmm. come together. So, you know, I mean, it, yes, it's difficult to wake up every day and be like, yeah, I'm ready to go. And I know you want to do the loan with me. You know, I mean, it's like you don't do that. But I mean, if you sit there and think one of the things we we concentrated on from the beginning and I, I have to admit, I kind of snickered up about it a little bit when you said get up and do some affirmations in the morning. And I said, I don't want to talk to myself in the morning. All that woo-woo <laughs> stuff. What are you, a quack? Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't, do I need a statue for that or something like that? Or, you know, what's the deal? So anyway, no, I, so, so I finally said, okay, I bought into it, you know, because, you know, repetition and you've repeated it. And, and I thought, you know, that's really a, that's probably a good idea. So got up in the morning, figured out what I was grateful for for the day had a few uh, affirmations, pulled them off your list that you gave me and just started repeating that. And just thinking about good things just puts you in a good mood. Mm -hmm. So you get your mindset ready to go and you put yourself in that good mood, you're bound to have good things happen. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've heard somebody say, oh man, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And I'm like, well, did you get back in and try it again? <laughs> <laughs> or are you just going to be crabby all day? <laughs> yeah, whose BS lie did you uh, accept and embrace there? Right? <laughs> I know. So I'm like, you don't want to start the day like that because sometimes that kind of just keeps rolling the whole day and then something else happens and you go, see, I knew it. And, you know, of course you knew it because you're right. So you're always going to have that be right attitude. So when you fell off the bed, that's a bummer. So, you know, whatever. Get back in. Try it again. Get with it. Uh, again, nobody's 100% perfect. You just have to, you know, remind yourself. And you get up in the morning and you just get that mindset and you look for the, the great stuff in the day. And I'm big, big planner. So usually the night before, I will actually look at my calendar for the next day. And actually, one of the things I teach my team in the branch is always on Monday to look at your whole week. Mm -hmm. So you have your whole week and you know exactly how it's going to pan out. And then if you need to fix things, you, you do so accordingly, like maybe the night before or something of that nature. But I pretty much have set, what am I going to do tomorrow? Who am I going to meet? How am I going to make that a good meeting? Um, how's it going to end? What's the result? What's the end result? What do I want to accomplish in that meeting so that we both walk away feeling like a million bucks or 10 mm -hmm. million bucks or whatever, you know, just feeling good about it. So I try to get in that mindset the night before, go to sleep thinking good thoughts, can't be you know, can't hurt and then get up in the morning, do a couple of quick things, nothing major, you know, I mean, it's really a 10, 15, 20 minute thought process just to get back in the groove. And then you think, oh, okay, I've got this going on today. That should be great. And you already set yourself up that you're going to be, you know, having a good meeting. So why wouldn't it be good? It's going to be great. So right. that's pretty much what I like to do in the morning, just get ready. And then that conveys over to the client. That's number one. Absolutely. Because what you prepare in private, uh, you will now be praised in public because of that private preparation. Preparation in private precedes victory in public. And I, so I love that you're bringing intentionality around that. People often will gl gloss over this stuff and say, yeah, 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 I know this. Yeah, I've heard this before. You know. Yeah, be positive. Yeah, make some affirmations. Yeah, do some visualization. They kind of gloss over it and they give me the strategies. Give me the tactics, Brenda. Give me the, the good stuff, Doran. Come on, give me the how-to. No, no, this is the how-to. Tell me, Brenda, what's the likelihood you would have closed 53 loans in one month if you weren't doing the daily mindset work, building your certainty, your confidence, your positive expectation, and your belief in yourself, and also your belief in what's possible for you 
and having a positive expectation and meditating on gratitudes daily, what's the likelihood you would have had such, such an epic month if you had not been doing all that stuff privately in preparation daily months prior to that epic yeah, month? That, yeah, that wouldn't have happened at all. I'll guarantee it because, you know, I mean, one of the things is, is if you have a game plan, you know, you're looking at what you're going to accomplish for the day. What if you start out with a whole big fat zero? Well, then you're going to end up with zero. I mean, that that's not even possible. If you don't have preparation, planning, mindset, just a thought process. I mean, if you enjoy your business, you, what, regardless if it's mortgage or any type of business, if you get up in the morning and you enjoy your business and you plan on purpose that business, then you're going to make, you're going to be successful. I mean, yeah. it sounds goofy, but it's totally true. Oh, uh, no, it doesn't sound goofy at all. I mean, it's, yeah. it's bringing intentionality to it. Most people, they wake up late, they put on a cup of coffee, uh, they look at the news, they watch the news, they fill their mind with negativity, they check their emails, they're in reactivity mode for a good chunk of the morning, and that's how they start their day, and they wonder why they're not, you know, they got chump level routines, and they wonder why they're not getting champ level results. Well, wonder no longer. You want champ level results, you got to have champ level routines, and that's what we really speak, what we're speaking to right now in uh, Brenda's story is the champ level routines that culminated in the champ level results that she's getting and uh, that she will continue to get because uh, there's a great quote I heard just a few weeks ago. I think it was uh, uh, Darren Hardy's quote, uh, the editor and publisher of Success Magazine. He said, you cannot own success. It's rented and rent is due every <laughs> single day. I love that because you can't sit on your laurels and think, okay, I did my push-ups today, so now I'm fit for life. No, you gotta do your push-ups every day. You gotta yeah. keep building that muscle every day. You gotta put yourself out of your comfort zone every day. So we've talked about mindset and what it takes to build up the muscle that drives your marketing. Because with a weak mindset muscle, you will never be able to drive the 12-cylinder, epically awesome marketing engine you need to get to your goals. You just won't. So everything starts and finishes with mindset. I've said it before and I'll say it again. And Brenda's a living embodiment of that. But now let's talk about once we, we uh, start to build up that, that mindset muscle, let's look at some tactics from a marketing standpoint. So <clears throat> Brenda, per, uh, perhaps you can share maybe one, two or three of your favorite, most profitable, highest yielding database marketing strategies. If your hands were tied and you were only allowed to deploy and execute three database marketing strategies that are most profitable, what would they be? Oh my goodness, I love everything. Um, you know, I know that I get a lot of results from um, the annual mortgage review because you're always, no matter what, I don't want to say the word forced because you're not forced to call them, but it, it forces you to pay attention. Let's just go that direction mm -hmm. that you've, it's already been a year since you talked to them last, perhaps, except maybe the birthday in between. Um, but you've, you've talked to them about a year ago and you want to make sure that they're okay and that they're moving forward with, you know, the loan is good and, and their financial, I mean, not all their finances, because we're not a financial advisor necessarily, but that everything is where it should be, basically. So I love calling my clients and re, or at least reanalyzing where their loan is, how's the market doing, what's trending, and making sure that I at least get in touch with them and give them a call just to check in or an email um, and just check in and see how they're doing. I think that's actually pretty good because even if they're not interested in working on a new loan or there's no need to, then perhaps at that time, even with a nice little touch, they um, they respond back and say, oh, you know, I'm so glad you contacted me because my friend or my neighbor is ready to buy. Bingo. And so I feel like, you know, the combination, is, you, you kill two birds with one stone almost with just taking care of that. So I think that's a key factor in, in actually uh, staying in touch with your database um, and, you know, obviously you're going to be able to do it once a month because every month there's an anniversary. So exactly. that's key for two weeks, two Wednesdays out of the month. I devote that to the annual mortgage reviews. So that's awesome. first and foremost. I'll, I'll awesome. give it number one. So annual mortgage review, folks, you've probably heard it before. But just like, you know, the fact that push-ups help you get stronger and eating healthy makes you feel healthier. 
That ain't going to help you knowing about that stuff unless we do that stuff. So this is another prime example. It ain't going to help you just to know about the annual mortgage review. You got to do the annual mortgage review. So let's talk about one or two more. What else would you say would be on the top of your database marketing arsenal list? Um, I think the monthly, um, the emails, the emails that you put together, the <clears throat> done for you emails. Yeah. yeah. That go out um, to my clients and actually my realtor partners. Uh, I think that keeps you front and center in front mm -hmm. of them all the time. So if they do have a neighbor or someone that needs um, a refinance or a purchase or something of that nature, then they see you once a month, sometimes twice a month. Um, I think we've changed it back and forth different times, but they'll be um, seeing me all the time. So that, that right there, just uh, something comes up to them. Oh, they just got an email from Brenda. Oh yeah, here's her information right here. Cause how many times do you think that they say, Oh, who was that realtor I worked with? Or what was that lender's name? Gosh, I mean, Brenda, the lender, nothing I will say, but um, you know, <laughs> Joe Smith, they might forget, um, you know, but, you know, this way it's in front of them all the time and they can, uh, they can get that, that, um, uh, let's call it a memory. They can get that brand of memory mm -hmm. every month. Call it that. Absolutely. So that's another key. Thing. And how yeah. often are these videos going out? Obviously our, our done for you video marketing service typically will send them out once a week to prospects, clients, and realtors. Uh, but I'm curious, how often have you been sending them out? Twice, uh, twice a month. Twice a month. Out. Okay. So most people, a lot of people in the space would say, really, Brenda, or really, Doran, once a week, once every two weeks, isn't that, you know, a little much? Aren't, aren't we going to cause them to get disgruntled and unsubscribe and get complaints? I mean, isn't that a lot? To which I would respond, absolutely. If you're sending them out cookie cutter crap that's snoring boring, unless they're complaining about insomnia problems and they're needing some kind of a quick cure to slip them into a coma, uh, chances are... Yes, the problem of sending weekly or monthly, if you're sending cookie cutter crap, is even if you send it monthly or every three months, if it's crap, they're not going to want to receive it from you. So the key is quality, quality right. content, relevant, applicable, meaningful, helpful, educational, useful. So can you speak to that, Brenda, in terms of um, how the, uh, the quality of the content is, you know, producing engagement, response, uh, generating direct or indirect uh, business just by having quality content in front of them, in a, in a, you know, in front of them on a regular basis? Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I get a lot of response back. Uh, you guys do a great job um, putting the material together to send it out, which is what I, I love because I don't have to do anything. Done right. for you. Right? Set it so, and forget it, baby. How easy. Done for you marketing. That's my favorite. So, but I do get a lot of response. They like the content because it it actually, you know, it's it's applicable to our mortgage industry. And it makes, you know, some some will catch somebody's eye, some won't. I mean, it just depends on what it is. But mm -hmm. I, I think on an overall basis, over a 12-month period, there's enough content on different subjects that catches everybody's eye at one point or another, regardless mm -hmm. of what who they are, because, you know, everybody's so different. I mean, everybody may, some people like certain things, and this guy may say, oh, I don't like that, or or that doesn't interest me. But you know what? There's always going to be one thing that'll that'll pick up that interest and pique that interest for them. And so, they can never say, Brenda, I haven't heard from you for a while, or Brenda, oh, I forgot what your phone number is, or Brenda, I decided to go with my bank because, uh, frankly, I kind of forgot. I kind of forgot about um, you know the fact that you did my loan ten years ago, and I couldn't figure out how to get a hold of you. They never, you never hear that from your clients, do you? No, no, no. I I want to make sure that they, if they need something at all, that I'm pretty much there for them. And you know, like the other thing I do, the third thing you said, three things. I mean, what, the third one I do is I love to call them and just wish them a happy birthday. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. solicit loans or do anything like that, but I just want them to, re, you know, know that I remembered their birthday because they are important to me, and I want them to know that hey, I, I, you know, I have a list drawn up on purpose so I know whose birthday's who, and I just want to just wish you a happy birthday. And I think that's a warming thought that anybody would receive. In a, in a good manner. So I, I like that too. So those those three things are my top tickets for getting in front of my clients and making sure that I stay in front and that, you know, if they need something, they'll call me. That's awesome. And again, notice guys that she actually really cares about the client. If you don't care about your client, you just want the cash. You're not going to call your client on their birthday. You're just not. 
but because she cares, she's naturally driven and wants to do it. And obviously the results reinforce her to continue to want to do it. It's almost like it pours gasoline on the fire to her motivation because she sees how it cultivates the relationships. She sees how it drums up just by virtue of cultivating and connecting uh, that relationship on a higher level that there's more repeat and referral business that just comes out of the woodwork naturally without soliciting it or asking for it. And that becomes this upward spiral of awesomeness because she just keeps seeing, hey, this is meaningful, this is cool, this is fun, and it's profitable. You can't beat that, right? When it's fun and it's profitable. So now, didn't I tell you before what my um, my database um, percent of repeat business is? Um, no, tell me. It's 85%. 85% so of your clients do a repeat transaction or refer somebody out because I'll, no. you know, like I've done it many times and I'll take the month of fundings, you know, let's say there's 20 fundings and predominantly there's going to be 17 of them, probably 16, 17, you know, a good number. It varies obviously month to month, but there's about an 85% return just because it either was a database referral or they redid or their kids or, you know, just something of that nature. That's so phenomenal. It's about that's amazing. You know, we talk to clients all the time on breakthrough calls and uh, we look at their database and we look at what they're doing and what they're not doing. And invariably, they're leaving a shit ton of money on the table. And we say, hey, if you're rolling like some of our most successful clients, uh, like Brenda Dentino, for example, Brenda Delenda, and you've got black belt level database marketing in place running on all 12 cylinders, you should be getting one, two or three deals per month for every 100 past clients. And invariably it blows their mind. They're like, are you kidding me? They can't even fathom it. And then we have a quote like this. This is a real deal factoid that 85% of Brenda's business is coming in the form of repeat or referral business. Oh, pardon me, 85% of her clientele base is sending a repeat or referral transaction. You start to see, yeah. you know, that is not a small number when you look at the size of Brenda's database, when you're looking at thousands of people in the database, that is a significant number. So it's all uh, yeah. these little things stacking together. You know, people say, don't sweat the, the small stuff. Average was, I think the national average was like 12% re, re, uh, referral. Like just somebody just starting a database, maybe done it for a year. Uh, mm -hmm. I read somewhere not too long ago that it was like about a 12% return. So even if you have, you know, 100 people and you get to get 12 new deals or a thousand, what is it? Well, <laughs> let me do the math. <laughs> if, you have, if your database anyway. is 100, for example, keep it simple. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Then you get 12. Could you use 12 new deals, one new extra deal a month? I mean, that Absolutely. caught my eye right off the bat when I was starting this, you know, and you, my numbers didn't go up on my database. They have. I mean, I'm just over 2,000. But you figure if they're repeats all the time that, you know, it's not going to grow that much, but it still grows a little bit. But they're all such repeats that it's not really like, you know, 10,000, but I still get tons off of them. I mean, 20 loans a month, that's not too bad, right? And that's not so a good, the referral is the big piece. The referral yeah. one's the real big piece because people think, well, people don't do transactions yeah. that often, Dorn. Yeah, you're missing the point. The referral, yeah. How many referrals yeah. could these people, the people, average person knows 200 people. How many referrals could they send you if they were sufficiently inspired to do so? And if you stayed in touch and if you wowed their socks off and if you had systems to proactively and consistently and reliably get those referrals. Right. And, and those people know is. that I will. Yeah, they know that I'll give them a good deal, too, because they trust me. And I, you know, I'm going to give them a deal. I would do a free loan before I would mess anybody up or screw anybody over, excuse the expression, but I would totally do that. So when somebody refers to me, I make it a point to give them an extra special deal too. So they can't lose. It's a great deal for everybody. It's win-win and it's, you know, not all about money. It's about taking care of them again, more than any. So 12% to 85%. Yeah. And that actually did, I got up in those higher numbers pretty quickly too. So management of database is very, very key. Very Mission key. critical. You can miss a meal, but don't miss the database marketing piece, guys. You leave a shit ton of money on the table if you miss the beat on that. Um, if you guys have any questions for the awesome Brenda the Lenda, hit us up while we're doing this live, and I will field one or two of them uh, as time permits. So hit us up with questions if you have any questions for that are 
pertinent, pertinent and relevant to your situation. We'd love to help you drill down a little deeper. Uh, so let's talk about getting referral partners. You've got a solid stable of referral partners, Brenda, that you've built up over the years. For people who are new and just trying to break into the game, what's the single most valuable tip you would give to them to uh, break into new relationships and, and uh, establish solid relationships that culminate into loyal partnerships and lots of referrals? Well, the first thing that always jumps into my head is like, you know, when you're trying to develop relationships, you're talking to people and, you know, inevitably, if you talk to somebody, you might promise them something. I mean, the whole key to my whole thing, if I'm going to pinpoint one thing that I, I think, well, I know that I do well is follow up, no matter what it is, any part of the, the, the train here, meeting somebody, promising something, um, giving them some marketing things, doing whatever it is, just following up and staying focused and making sure that they are engaged with you. You know what I mean? So like mm -hmm. if I'm out just meeting somebody for the first time and I promise them I'm going to send them a flyer on this one buy down program that we have that caught their interest, I'm going to follow up on that. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be that one notch closer to having an actual relationship with them mm -hmm. because, you know, it's like going on a date. Um, okay. I'll meet you at five o'clock and then you don't meet them. You know, they're not going to really want to talk to you. <laughs> You're there five minutes early. They might be a little impressed. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So it follow up and, and keeping your word is the most important thing of any relationship, personal, mm -hmm. business, whatever, as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. So what you're really speaking to, Brenda, is before you can get the referrals and get the solid partners, you have to be a certain type of person. You have to be a, a person of integrity. You have to be a person of your word. You have to be a person who is seeking out to add value first. You have to be a person that someone can count on. And so you're really speaking to who you need to be so you can do the things you need to do so you can have the results you want to have. It's the classic be, do, have, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so without that being this, obviously – no amount of tactics or strategies are going to help you. You know, if you don't change your beingness to be someone you can count on, it's kind of like, you know, spraying perfume on poop or putting lipstick on a pig. It ain't going to change <laughs> the end result. You're just glossing over and putting a bandaid on the problem. Right. So, yeah. so that's, that's mission critical. Now, how do you, what are some of the ways that you add extraordinary value to your, your partners such that they stick to you like super Okay, well, then once you've established a relationship or are you trying to get to one, you know, you've made those initial contacts, then, you you know, you always have your, you know, our favorite verbiage, value added proposition. You know, you want to offer them something that will help them increase their business. That's that's what the whole key is. You don't want them. I mean, I don't know. I don't want I don't want to speak poorly of anybody ever. But, you know, there was a, a, a thought process in the marketplace that, you know, us lenders had to do the proverbial kissing of the butt to mm -hmm. get the realtor to pay attention and all that. But I think that things have changed in, in the past few years because, you know, I personally, the agents I work with, of course, are, are great. They, they always like a nice little pat on the back or a little cherry cherry. But, you know, for the most part, I like to offer them something that will help them in business because then in, in turn, they're going to give me a loan, which helps me in business. But you actually create them as a partner. Like, you know, you're looking at them as the person that you want to help do good so that we can do good. And it's like, you know, the old Jerry Maguire, help me, help you, help me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what, if it works your, out, what are your some what are your you know top one, two or three favorite ways to add value to your realtors? Just to give an example. Well, those are the top ones. OK, well, first of all, um, you know, I mean, marketing, marketing is key. Mm -hmm. So that's where you always come in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to we're going to help them out. We got the new program that we're working with right now, which is the Facebook ads mm -hmm. that we can um, you know, set them up generating leads for them, which is always great, depending on where that market is. Um, you know, that's that's key. So I can offer that to them and in turn receive the loans or actually get them a valuable, nice buyer already done and pretty and and qualified and hand them right over. And right. That, that is the is ultimate. Like, a pre-approved yeah. buyer that they did not source. Yeah. When and they ever get that from any other lender any other time. Never. Yeah. Right. And maybe once in a blue moon, but this is a consistent way that we're starting to do that. Right. So I'm putting that in first position because we started that at the end of November. Well, 
beginning of December, basically. And of course, you've got the holidays, although I always say it's go time, not slow time. But um, <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> I don't I like that. the marketing. It's your marketing. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, um, I, I always want to make sure that we get that. So we started that so that everybody could start their year off and start handing buyers to our agents. And that has worked super, super great. I mean, that that your program on that is beyond great. I like. I think it's working well, very well. In fact, didn't we figure out that the price of the leads were like in the five dollar range mm-hmm. by the time we were done getting those leads put yeah. together? So you're, that's you're key right like there. Three x or four x your money so far. You know, four hundred bones. Yeah. And- and uh, 12K yeah. in return. That's actually, uh, I went to public school, so my math is a bit off. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's probably, uh, you know, more like, what would that be? Uh, I don't know. Uh, don't make me think too hard right now. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be a hell of a lot more than 4X. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that's that, so out great. generating that's leads for your realtors is working. Uh, giving yes. them pre-approved buyers is working. Yes. And helping them with their marketing is working. The big idea, guys, is you got to do more than just offer great rates and great service. Everyone else and their dog is doing that in this business. You you know, I just talked to uh, I just talked to a client today and she was saying how she was talking to one of her realtors. And because of all these other coaching programs, I won't name names, but you know what chances are, you know who they are. um, That are proponents of smiling and dialing cold calling on certain days of the week. Well, this one agent got 15 freaking calls in one day with the same old boring ass pitch, you know, great okay. rates, great service. Can we meet? And you can imagine, you know, the realtor is building up so much resistance to this that if you have a even remotely close to powerful, unique value proposition that they actually care about, like, hey, I'm going to give you leads. I've got more pre-approved uh, buyers that I have realtors to refer them to. Would you be open to getting a coffee to see if you might qualify for what I've got? That is a breath of fresh air compared to all the bullshit they hear every single freaking Monday yeah. or whatever day it is that yeah. all the mortgage professionals are hammering the same agents with the same boring ass pitch. So it doesn't yeah. take much, guys. In the land of the blind, a one-eyed man is king. So keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take much. So right. is there anything you, uh, as we wrap up here, Brenda, is there anything that you would uh, like to share in terms of how strategically investing in your own personal and professional development with mentoring and coaching has made a difference in the success of your career? Obviously, this is a little bit of a self-serving question, uh, in my case, because I'm your coach, but I want you guys to listen to not necessarily what Doran's doing or the different Doran, the difference Doran's making. What I want you guys to listen to is how strategically investing in coaching and systems and proven plans and proven methods is a massive success accelerator. So, Brenda, can you speak to that briefly in terms of how that's made a difference, if at all? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've always believed that you should have a coach or somebody that you can bounce ideas off always. I mean, I, you know, no matter what, because that's always key to a business. But, you know, in, in, um, in putting a strategy together um, and having you to work with and to, you know, get these new ideas. I mean, where would I have ever come up with um, getting a buyer ahead of time or Facebook leads or anything like that? I mean, that might not have popped into my thought process because you know how good and uh, my technology is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've been delightfully awesome at delegating that as of late, which is a yeah. huge breakthrough. I'm excited about that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, delegation is key half the time, right? <laughs> but um, you know, you've got to have, you've got to be engaged with the up and coming stuff. You've got to be engaged with what's new, what's going to get you the, you know, as things change. I mean, this whole world in mortgage banking and real estate changes constantly, changes with the market, changes with generations, changes with everything. So, you know, I mean, to have somebody that you can count on, that you can talk to. And even though you, I mean, how many people go to seminars or webinars and sit down and hear this great stuff and they love it? but they just don't do it. Bingo. Well, having a coach or a mentor or somebody that has an accountability, we talk about mm-hmm. that all the time, mm-hmm. keeping accountable 
increases your business. You're building a, a habit. Habit is success. You, you have a habit in place, you're going to be successful. And somebody to push you along those routes on our conversations, um, bringing new programs to the you know forefront, uh, things of that nature has been just super key. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. I, I, I don't know. I could probably go on and on and on and maybe not make a whole lot of sense, but it's just you get too excited and you want to say everything. But, <laughs> But it's really key to have somebody to to work with to see, you know, what's going on out there and what's the latest and the greatest. I guess that's the best way to just put it all together. Well, what's really cool about you, Brenda, is that no matter how successful you become, you stay humble. You don't sit on your laurels. You don't say, oh, I've got it all figured out now. So now I can just coast. You're continually wanting to advance. You don't you're not content to slide down old mountains. You want to continually and constantly climb up new ones and you've got this insatiable desire to keep sharpening your sword your proverbial marketing sword your proverbial mindset sword your proverbial leadership sword and that's why you're so successful because you just keep growing you keep learning and you're receptive to coaching now sometimes perhaps most uh, of it is me sometimes you're a little pain in the ass because uh, you don't embrace the idea i give you right on the spot and i have to ram it down your throat but eventually you come around, right? And it's probably just because I'm bad at sugarcoating it and have it be a little more palatable. So I'm working on that. But the big idea is mm -hmm. you have that coachable spirit, you have ambition, and you understand that if it is to be, it's up to me. You're willing to do the work. You take complete ownership of the fact that if you want to progress, you've got to grow. You cannot grow without progress. And that's one of the things I really love about you. It's been such a, a privilege and a pleasure and uh, certainly a, a very much a, a learning experience for me as well, being on this journey with you, because I got to keep ahead of the curve and stay ahead of you. So a hard, the, so part of the battle for me in coaching you is I got to keep myself progressing so I can stay ahead of you because you're moving so fast. You know, you can uh, you can whiz right past me and all of a sudden I got nothing to give you. So thank you for giving me that impetus and, uh, and and giving me that lava flow under my butt to keep moving forward. <laughs> so what would you like to uh, leave people with the golden nugget you would like to leave people with to have them marinate their minds on as uh, we leave this interview? Just one thing that you think uh, is the biggest takeaway you'd like people to leave with. Oh my goodness. There's so many. Um, I mean, honestly, just, just get somebody to partner with you with, which would be you. I mean, I, I think everybody should have a coach and, and that's how you're going to grow. I mean, what is it? If you don't grow, you're, you're just, you're, you're, well, I don't want to say you die because you don't die, but you, you just, don't grow. Your, your results are going to blow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. That's a way to it. But you know, I just, if you want to really do a good job and you want to stay focused and you want to keep up on things, you have to have a coach and you have to know what is just, you know, what's important. I mean, take a look at yourself. I mean, sometimes we've had conversations where you just delve into what, what am I thinking? What am I doing? What am What's my whole genre? What are we, what are we talking about here? And then you can, you know, you even just like can even change an attitude sometimes on what you, how you look at certain things. I just think an extra inspiration um, that is, that has a good forward motion like you do is key. That's how I'll mm. leave it with you. Mm. Well, there is something to be said for synergy and uh, having yes. two, two people who have that synergy, iron sharpening iron. You see the best of the best in the world, whether it be in athletics, whether it be in uh, business, whether it be in politics, whatever feat, whatever particular area of domain someone may be in. And you see the best of the best get there, not alone, but via the help of a team. They're never at the top because of their own efforts in isolation. Right. They've got coaches, they got advisors, they've got mentors, they've got people in their corner, giving them the insight they can't get on their own, revealing blind spots they can't see on their own, giving distinctions they can't get on their own. And all these things culminate into champion level results. Uh, we got a comment from Jeannie Hawkins. She said, 
Thank you guys. You're very welcome, Jeannie. Thank you for uh, being part of this. I hope you guys got some value from this conversation. If you guys would like to learn more about the inner workings of the secret sauce formula <laughs> that really is the undergirding foundation that allowed Brenda to close 53 loans in one month, an avalanche of loans, we can call it. And you want to learn how you can apply those same principles, those same strategies, those same systems in your business to create an avalanche of loans in your pipeline, not just for one month, for, but for the rest of your career. I invite you guys to check us out and book a call. We have a certain amount of availability in our calendar and you guys can uh, get a look at our calendar to see availability for a free breakthrough coaching session by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Just the way you see it on your screen there. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And here's what this call looks like. It's a 60 minute call and it's a 60 minute call as opposed to a 15 minute call because we're actually wanting to understand your situation. You're gonna have us listen and understand, perhaps for the first time in a long time, you've actually had someone really listen with caring ears as to where you're at in your business, where you want to be, what is that breakthrough look like to you? And then most importantly, perhaps how to get there. What's the shortest path to the cash? What's the lowest hanging fruit? And we will give you a cut if we can help you and we can't help everybody. We're very selective with the type of clients we can help. But if we can help you, we'll give you a custom tailored prescription on how to pour gasoline on the fire, help you generate more repeat and referral business, get more uh, referral partners without begging or pleading or bribing or the, the hell <laughs> of cold calling and be able to attract the right partners who go all in and send you all their business all the time, working on your terms, not theirs. Imagine that. And being able to set up systems to diversify your lead stream so you're not just relying on clients or realtors, but you diversify so you can build stability through diversification. And you have a proven formula, a proven plan to get from where you are to where you want to be. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, connect with us. Go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply and book a uh, complimentary breakthrough call. All right, guys. So... Uh, that's all we got for today. I hope you guys don't just listen to this stuff. Listening to it doesn't do jack diddly squat. Just like the book you didn't, just because you have a book on the bookshelf, it ain't going to help you until you read it and apply it, right? So yeah. this is about execution. This is a game of execution. So I want you guys to think of one thing you heard from this interview you're going to put to practice. They have not yet put to practice. And it may be something you heard before, but you just haven't gotten around to doing it. Kind of like, hey, going to the gym is going to get me fit. Novel concept. Maybe I'm going to start doing this thing called, you know, burning my muscles. And uh, I want you to apply that same logic to your business. What's one thing you knew about that you learned or that got reinforced on this interview that it's time now to grab the bull by the horns and pull the trigger on it? All right, guys, so I challenge you with that and just remove all the excuses. Say, yeah, I don't have the time. Screw it. Let's do it. Champions, find a way. When you're truly committed, you find a way. You don't find the time. You make the time. And Brenda is a beautiful example of the fact that she makes the time for the things that matter most. So super proud of you, Brenda. Keep the awesome work up and uh, looking forward to seeing you continue to blossom and bloom as time okay. goes on. Thank you, Doran. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for being with us.